All right, well, Fabi is better than me, confirmed. <laughs> he beat Magnus. All right, Infinite Giant Killer from Argentina. Apparently, I'm 1-0 against this person. Let's play a Von Hennig Gambit, shall we? Shall we? Von Hennig Gambit against the Karo as soon as they play DE4. You're ready. Bishop G4 would be nice. <laughs> All right, well, we are going to play this very fun... I imagine bishop g6 here, and we are going to play this very fun gambit of bishop takes e6. Okay, well, didn't really get my opponent thinking. But the idea... So now now black has a lot of options. Okay, what's going on here? If black just plays e6 and locks their bishop out of the game, then after castles, I have a very strong attack on this part of the board, right? I have great compensation for the pawn. Like, they'll, they'll come in castle, but then I'll just come and really checkmate them along this diagonal. If they play bishop g4... The issue is knight to e5, and then if you take my queen, I take your king. Very, very fancy stuff. So bishop f5 is best. But the issue with bishop f5 is now I'll play knight g5, and now I'm threatening to play... Now I'm threatening to play here, knight g5. I'm threatening to take f7 and go rook takes f5. Like, imagine you play here bishop e7 or h6. I'll take f7, take the bishop, and then I have the pin here. So not only do I get my pawn back, but also, like, your king's totally... Totally blown open. So bishop g6, bishop dodges all the stuff. Bishop dodges all the stuff. It gets out in the game. It dodges the hits here, the hits here. But the issue of bishop g6, I mean, still is the best move. The issue of bishop g6 is that it's no longer guarding e6. So finally, we're just taking whatever we can get. We're taking whatever the bishop isn't on. And we finally sacrifice on e6. So here I only have one pawn for the piece. Crazy sacrifice. Stockfish does not approve. Leela is a little bit more sympathetic. Um... All right, and so what else has happened in this game? What else has happened in this game? I left that knight on e6, and I supported it by actually getting rid of this knight. By getting rid of this knight. And... All right. I'm, like, live commentating prior moves. Kind of crazy stuff. I got rid of that knight because then I played rook to e1, pinning this way. Okay, queen h4 probably better, because now bishop c5 is an issue. So, how can I attack? Also, what is going on? Here, I want to play d5. I don't know. Um, I have... They have a rook and two pieces for a queen and a pawn. So that's actually kind of quite the haul. Quite the haul, but hopefully we can just get them quick before, you know, they patch up. So they've already made some good developing moves, but I don't want to let their king get to safety, so I'm trying to blow open... blow this open. I'm going to go pawn takes to just try and keep my knight away. All right, let's just take this file. Some tasty targets here. I'm fighting queen d4, and if the bishop moves, then I would take the knight. So pawn takes c6. Yes, it controls these squares against my knight. Has drawbacks. Okay, the bishops are on solid squares here, and the knight, I imagine, is about to be protected. So I need something else to hit. Let's go to a6 or c4. If I go to c4, then my knight can jump in. My knight can jump in because I would pin the pawn. So probably deciding whether or not to get rid of the knight. I mean, he could get rid of it after queen c4. Which is probably best. Yeah, okay, got rid of it now. Not ideal. Running out of things to attack. Oh, wait, maybe I'm not. Queen g2, I'm hitting the knight. At, so I, I, you can't guard both these squares right now. I mean, okay, presumably you saved the knight, but now I'll have queen d6. That seems like a pretty big check. That seems like you're missing this dark square bishop that was defending here. Okay, knight b6 is going to shelter you, though. So, what can I do about that? c4, knight b6. Is that endgame okay? Probably not. Alright, knight b6, I'll probably just grab this pawn. Just grab this pawn. I'll grab what I can get. Try to get that pawn to a5. It takes e2. It's 
kind of annoying. My rook needs to s guard this rank. 62 is a good move. It needs to not get back rank mated. Now my opponent's kept this very solid. I haven't had many things to attack yet. But all that defending has drained their clock. You see, I have actually quite the time advantage, which is rare for me. Okay, I can't get back rank mated. Just play your h3. This is hard to protect. I'm trying to keep them off this altogether. Nothing is unprotected in my opponent's whole position. A bit frustrating. Alright, we're gonna guard g2 and e2. Ah. Uh, very clever, they for g7. Queens do not make good defenders of things. Okay, I gotta run away. I gotta just try and get him on the clock, but my opponent's very good. Five, try to loosen something in their position. Nice. Okay, Whew, tough one. Queen eventually prevailed. Had, but my opponent did a really good job. My opponent did a really good job. Thank you, thank you. Infinite giant killer. Nearly, nearly was so. But we got a big win in Title Tuesday with this line, the von Hennig variation, the anti stockfish line. Because this is this is the refutation. This is the ref. Literally, like. If you want to know the refutation to the sock to the von Hennig gambit, this is it. This is what you have to do. You have to go exactly here in this position. What's up, gambit chads? Who am I? I'm William from April 19th. You've been listening to William from April 18th, and so what happened was my stream kind of cut out for 30 seconds or something. Uh, not really sure what happened, but I'll try to fill in the gap here of what that loser from yesterday was saying. So before getting you. Back to what, what he was saying. So, so basically, this is the position we're at. We've had a Karakon in this game. Uh, D takes E4, which instead of recapturing, we just take the advantage take advantage of the fact that this diagonal is open. There's no pawn here anymore. Opponent defends the pawn. And now this is the gambit part where we trade here, take that development advantage. Basically, what I was talking about was this bishop is the problem for black. If they develop it to G4, we have this very, very nice trick, knight to E5. It's not even a trick. It's just a winning move. We're attacking the bishop, and we're threatening mate. If they take our queen, this is the trick, that then, then that's checkmate. So bishop to g4 is not playable. And if they play something like e6, this is also very, very bad for black, because this is quite dangerous. With the bishop locked in here, what will happen is we'll just basically launch a really, really strong attack. Let me just put a couple moves on the board even, actually. We'll launch a very, very strong attack, put a lot of pressure on this knight, and try to checkmate them along this diagonal. So black needs to get this bishop out, and so my opponent correctly does bishop to f5 in the game, but the problem is we continue to harass that with this move knight g5, threatening now to play knight takes f7 and rook takes f5 in some order. For example, either h6 or bishop to e7, it wouldn't really matter, but we take f7, we take f5, and now here we're winning because we brought them into the pin and we got our pawn back and their king is totally torn open. So bishop f5, so they need to dodge all those tricks now. 
the, the bishop cannot be in line of the rook. It goes to g6, but it can't get out of the way of everything. <laughs> it gets out of the way of everything. It's now defending the king. It's on the diagonal. It's not in line with the rook. However, it's now not in contact with e6, and that's what we're going to take advantage of here with this sacrifice in the game. Bishop takes e6, pawn takes, knight takes, and now queen d7. And um, I'll <laughs> get back to your regularly scheduled programming talking about stockfish disapproves, but I think this is very practical. I mean, the idea is just to play bishop to g5. Thanks, Merciless. Pretty much pre-moving bishop to g5, although your opponent's likely to spend a lot of time here. So, knight's really great. Knight's really great. I mean, hits the queen, putting pressure on all these points, and it's going to stop castling in both directions by controlling these squares. So, we play bishop g5, and now the issue is, like, what do you do? Like, if you take this knight, then I take this knight... That was the point of bishop g5. If I just played rook e1 right now, then there was knight e4. All right, there was knight e4, and my opponent could hold this enough, and I mean, well, they did just take another knight. There are two pieces in this position, right? So we take this, and now, so they have a couple, king d7, I think is the best, yeah, it's the best move here. King d7, tough one. But so they just go with this queen sack line, which I think is most common on Lee chess in this, in this position. This queen sack line, very interesting. And so now we get to this position, And then Stockfish prefers black still, but um, I've ran this further, and I think Leela also kind of likes white. If we count it up, okay, we each have rook and knight. I'm up one pawn. They have two bishops and a rook, which is a large, large haul for the queen. So we really have to justify that by like, okay, this is a weak point, and they have very little development, and we need to try and get their king. And I don't think I did this exactly right. Queen f2 wasn't the best choice. Like, I'm hitting f6, but they just deal with that by def by developing. And the issue also is d5 I don't have because bishop c5. Okay, well, my next game started. All right, well, subscribe if that goes on YouTube. That was that, that was a fun win with the Von Hennig Gambit against a talented Argentinian player.